What is a boom operator? And what makes a good boom operator? Well, depending on who on a film set you talk to, you could hear some funny answers. Talk to someone in the camera department, for example, they could tell you that a boom operator is the person that keeps dropping a microphone into the shot. But a good boom operator would keep the microphone out of the shot. Talk to someone in the locations department and they're going to say, oh yeah, the boom operator is the person that always tells me to shut down noises. A good boom operator would leave me alone. But if you talk to the person in charge of the sound department, the sound mixer, they're going to tell you a very different answer. Now, I could simply ask you, what is a boom operator? And you're going to say the person that holds a pole with a microphone over it, right? Now, I'll tell you, when I talk to people and they ask me, what do you do for a living? And I tell them a boom operator, that's what they always tell me. Then I get the fun questions of, oh, do you actually get a chance to meet the actors? Yes, I'm right there on set with them. Do I think about that? No, I have so many other things I'm thinking about other than the stars that are in front of me. They're people, okay? Get over that. You want to be a boom operator? You have a job to do, just like everybody else on a film set. And as a matter of fact, your job is one of the more difficult jobs on a film set. It could actually be said that as far as the jobs on a film set go, yours is probably in the top three. I would actually say probably behind the focus puller, it is the most difficult job on a film set. Now, I don't want to get this into a debate. I don't want to get into a debate with a, with a director or a first AD or a camera operator or a DP, any of this kind of stuff. I don't want to. But what I am going to say is that from my perspective as a boom operator, we have a very difficult job. And part of that is because we are the redheaded stepchild, so to speak, of the film industry. There are three people on a film set that care anything about sound. The sound mixer, the boom operator, and the sound utility. A sound mixer runs the department from their chair where the mixing console is offset someplace. Sound utility is called sometimes out there to second boom with the boom operator. And they usually in modern eras, they manage the, the, the inventory of the department. They wire talent and they participate in booming and do other activities like that as the sound mixer and the boom operator see fit. However, the boom operators themselves are on set. They represent the sound department. They're the face of the sound department, if you will. You interface with talent, you interface with the producers, you interface with other departments, and of course you have no authority. You are the second in the department, even though technically the utility would technically be the best boy if you look at any other department. In the sound department, the, the best boy is the boom operator, even though they do nothing that is a best boy worthy. What they do on set though is best boy worthy. They represent the sound mixer with their authority on set. So how do you get into being a boom operator? Well, that in itself is a very difficult thing to explain because it's not a very simple thing to just say, well, you start as a boom operator and you just kind of figure things out. You can't exactly do that. Where do you work your way up from? Sound utility? Well, that is the third position technically. But a sound utility does every job in the department. Mixer has to step out to take a phone call with a producer of a next show that they're potentially going to be on. They may say, utility, take over for me, mix this take. Boom operator needs to step out to, to call home because there's an urgent matter that came up. Sound utility, step in, boom the scene for me, or come in and second boom the scene for me. A sound utility in itself is a very critical job, but the face of the department is the person that interfaces with everybody else. And that person is on set, the boom operator. So therefore the boom operator's position is actually one of the face of the department. Now I've said this a couple of times now, I want it to sink in. And that's the reason why I've said it a couple of times, because the sound mixer is way off in the back at a mixing console and listening. That's what the mixer's job is. They listen, they maybe practice their cues, they overhear everything in the department that happens through the microphone of the boom operator, and they work with the boom operator and the sound utility to get the very best possible tracks. Some mixers will even debate and say, once I start my show, well, that's, I just basically let my team run the show for me and I concentrate on getting my next job. I can tell you quite a few, few mixers have that perspective as a matter of fact. Now, that's not to say that's bad because a lot of us do like to work. And what I will say though, is a boom operator being on set 
is one of a lot of authority in itself. Because you are representing the department, you can't simply be someone that stands in the back of the room and picks their nose trying to figure out what they're going to do. You have to be very active in the department. You have to be very, uh, I guess you could say you have to have the foresight enough to know where the scene is going. You are a filmmaker in and of yourself. You have to look at the sides, figure out what is the sound priorities, and then work with the team to make sure that that sound is captured correctly. Because once Post gets that sound, you don't want them to replace the whole thing. If they replace it in ADR, which is automated dialogue replacement, where the actors listen to the sound that you recorded and say their lines into a microphone in a, in a closed off, quiet environment, and then they piece that together in the movie. If they do that too many times, the sound department's not doing their job and you're probably not going to be working as much. But a sound department that turns in tracks that are almost always used are going to be in high demand because they do good work. Now, it's very easy for me to tell you that a sound department in itself is a critical position on a set. But if you've never been on a set, it's very difficult to convey this. If you watch a movie, you say, okay, well, there's the picture. It's beautiful. Look at all that. But you don't think about the sound. Sound in of itself is something that is automatic. You don't think about it as being there. You just notice it when it doesn't work. Works the same way on a film set. When something is not working, like somebody, like for example, the director looks at their monitor and says, why am I not hearing anything? Are these working? Well, that's when the sound department's not doing their job. That's when something is not working correctly. It could be that the boom is not plugged in. It could be that the lobs are not working. It could be that the mixer has stepped out and they're not at their cart, whatever the case may be. The sound department is only noticed when there is a problem or when it's not working correctly. You don't want that to happen. A boom operator's primary job in representing the sound department on set is to make sure that such things do not happen. Sound department also will watch rehearsals and report back to the team. Mm, this scene takes place this direction. So you see, if you try to put a lob right in here, you're not going to be able to because it's going to be visible. So maybe I'll work with the utility and say, if you look in this way with the camera, which of course I'm talking to someone facing this direction. So most likely if you hide a lob right there, it's going to be visible unless you take the right kind of precautions. Most utilities actually that I know that are the better utilities will know what to do automatically and they'll, they're, they're going to make sure it's not visible from the side. But that's just an example if you have a green utility. But then getting into the idea of a green boom operator, what exactly is a green boom operator? It's someone that goes on set and has absolutely no idea how to capture the tracks and how to interface with people. I'm doing this series, building a better boom op to teach boom operators how to be a boom operator. Because if you have never been one before, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. You may think you know, but you don't. As a matter of fact, I've, I'm very familiar with a few people here in, in, in my town. Uh, my town. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly a town. My city, I should say, that are trying to cut their teeth in being a boom operator. And they've suddenly joined the union and now they're working on bigger shows. But if you don't do the exact right thing at the exact right time all the time, or at least make one or two occasional mess ups, you're going to stand out very quickly as like glow in the dark neon green. And a green boom operator is someone that's going to stand out very, very obviously. People are going to dial right in on you and say, geez, you need some work. Now, if you notice in this series, I'm going to just be speaking point blank to you. I'm not going to do a lot of my flashes. I'm not going to speak fast. I'm going to be speaking very matter of fact about the job as a boom operator and what it entails. I'm going to pick a topic and we're going to address that every single time I do one of these videos for the building a better boom op series. That may mean I talk about preferences or working with a certain person on set or working with another uh, person within your department or what you do on set and how you do it. Whatever the case may be, the topic I discuss is going to be one that you as a boom operator should dial in on if you have any interest in being a boom operator, because it is not as simple as holding a microphone over someone's head. Now, 
it is one of those things where it is not a high glamour position. It's not one where you're dealing, where putting on the makeup on the actors themselves, or you're part of the camera team, and so you always see pictures of them doing this number with the director, and you're always in the forefront of the pictures that are taken on set. You're more stealthy than that. You're behind the scenes watching everything that happens, and more importantly, listening. I am going to say it quite a bit in this series. You have to listen. If you're not listening and you're in the sound department, it's the same thing as wearing an eye patch over your right eye and deciding to be a camera operator. You go to put your eye inside of a viewfinder. Oh, what do you know? This is the eye that has a, a patch over it. You can't see. So you try to slide it over to the other one. It's going to mess up your workflow. If you do not listen on set, I don't know what you're doing. If you're a boom operator and you call yourself a boom operator, but you're not listening on set, then I don't even know what to tell you. Being a boom operator is a very critical position for the sound department. I'm going to go into exactly how critical and all the positions that, that really a boom operator is many different positions in one on set for the sound department. And I'm going to go into all those different hats that a boom operator has to wear and what they have to do. But if you're expecting this series to be one of just simply, how do I hold the pole? I may not ever get into how to hold a pole on this channel, at least in this series. And the reason why is because it's a very, very small part of being a boom operator. How so? I will explain, but let me do it in a different video. Because... This here is an introduction to the Building a Better Boom Up series where we are going to dial in on exactly what it is to be a better boom up. Now, of course, this is my point of view, my perspective. I've been a boom operator for years now, and I also train people. I teach a lot of classes. I interface with people. I'm part of panels talking about sound. I do a lot of education, and therefore, I bring to you my knowledge for your disposal. That's not saying I'm open to, uh, you know, criticism, critique. Absolutely, I'm certainly available. Uh, you know, you can, you can, you know, do all that. This is the internet, of course, and I know that there's probably very, very experienced boom operators out there that are going to say, "Well, actually, I do things differently." There is no one right way to do things unless it is the quiet way. For example, the mixer's way is another way to put it. The way that makes sure you get your tracks. There are many different sound perspectives on how to go about being a good boom operator. But I'll tell you this, in my experience, I've gotten good results. I've gotten good reviews. Well, I should say, mixers have said nice things. So I feel like I can bring to you my knowledge and not be considered, oh, did you see this hack? He's crazy. He's out of mind. Doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't think that's the case. I think you're going to learn a lot if you join me in this Building a Better Boom Up series. Now, this is the intro only, and in this, I'm just kind of explaining the overview. But as soon as I get into my first actual topic, you're going to see that I can talk all over the place and not even get into grabbing a pole. So keep that in mind as we get into the videos that you're about to see. Starting next with number one, episode number one. Geez, this is not going to be a very simple and just, okay, this is going to be a quick series. It's not going to be. It's going to be a lot of, a lot of videos, and there's going to be a lot of details that you're going to get. But I'll tell you this, if you follow the steps that I'm about to tell you, and you're going to follow the lessons I'm teaching you in this, you're going to be a better boom op. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.